Good morning, everyone. May 1st, 2020, day 19, and let's dig into repack products today. But before we talk about repack products, let's talk about my day yesterday. Uh, on the weeding tool perspective, uh, I, I think it's gone. I think I left it in my basket uh, when I was taking out other weeds, and I think I just dumped it into the compost. So hopefully, uh, that uh, did not destroy the entire uh, load from waste management, but I'm pretty sure that uh, that tool is gone uh, forever. So I had to. I went to McLennan yesterday to try to buy another one. Uh, both of the ones that I wanted were absolutely sold out, even though online showed they were available. So I'm back to square one again, is trying to find a weeder that can take out small weeds versus just like my uh, my little axe that's uh, a really handy tool. So got to figure that one out. Uh, but I also did purchase a sports car yesterday. I know I talked a few days ago around my eBay, eBay bucks that were uh, rapidly expiring and something I was being notified of every day I logged into eBay. But I did purchase a card, and so let's take a look at what that card is. Hey, so no surprise, I picked up a T206 Polar Bear card uh, for my set. This is card number 55 of 250, so very, very nice, even number, and probably the last card I'll pick up. Uh, for some time uh, for my T206 Polar Bear set. But this is Charlie Carr. And the, there's a couple really, really interesting facts about this card. So number one, it Polar Bear back. That's obvious. Very, very clean back. Um, it does have the crease on the top, obviously, in the back. So I think that. But the color of the card overall is very, very nice. The cool thing with the card is the, the, the hole punch in the middle. And so it looks like a circle, but it's actually not a circle. It's like a a little bit of a flower, maybe a tulip or something something like that. Uh, an interesting thing about these cards, you know, 100 years ago, uh, 90 years ago, when people traded back and forth, they would send their cards out and they, they would mark them somehow. So there is a, a large, there's large collections out there of stamped backs. People would take a stamp and, and stamp the back. So that way, when people are comparing what they have to what others have, they know instantly what their cards are. So this card was hole punched with that to, to signify that this card belonged to this individual person. So I think it's a really, really neat tell of this card as far as, as you know, the provenance of it. You know, obviously it changed hands. It went through the mail, came back in the mail, or maybe it never left uh, the person's house, but he marked it in a certain way. So you can start looking for cards like these with different marks on them, different stamps. I know there's a big collector uh, in Tobacco Row who has an entire stamp back collection. And, and I think it's just completely fascinating in, in his knowledge of stamps and, and what they mean and things like that. So that was a, a really cool one to add yesterday. Um, also, from a population report perspective, um, I do rank out uh, once a month. I will download the PSA uh, pop report for polar bear backs. This is number 47 when it comes to all 250 uh, polar bear cards as far as how many are graded. So this is obviously in the lower 20%. So uh, very, very uh, low pop report on the actual graded ones for this card. So it was a good one to add. I already had car in a, I think a, a Piedmont or a Sweet Cap rollback. So this is an upgrade for the set, but I felt it was a good way to to end, uh, I guess basically end April uh, for the T206 set and begin May, which may have uh, very few car purchases overall. Uh, I also did have someone reach out to me on Instagram yesterday and it was sort of a random message and, and he was reaching out saying, thank you for your T206 videos. They helped me uh, start this set. I now have nine cards and so, I'll, I thought that was really cool. We talked back and forth. I tried to offer him a free card that I had an extra up and he already had that one. He's putting together the Washington uh, team set. But it reminded me that when I made this channel up and I made my my sort of my first couple of videos, they were all about T206. So for anyone who was subscribed to my channel that was a T206 collector, they're a little bit uh, probably taken back by the lack of content for T206. But I just haven't had that many mail days recently to, uh, to make a video. But I still need to make a top 10 video for uh, pull up my polar bear cards. So we, I should probably get to that this week or next to, um, to make that happen. So that was a cool little side story that happened late last night that I thought was interesting. And then I picked up this card uh, yesterday around the same time. So good way to, uh, to end the month. But hey, let's talk about repack product. So 
So he came to the video for my thought process on repack products that this is your time of the show, enough of my T206 uh, cards, which you may have zero interest in. But I'm covering repack products for one reason. Uh, in this current environment, we are running out of, in a sense, new product to open. Um, very few card manufacturers, I don't think anybody's actually making product large scale at the moment. Panini may be opening back up again. I know Texas is sort of doing the initial phase of reopening. I believe Topps' main production uh, facility, I think, is also in Texas. But uh, we are well behind the schedule for the year, along with the fact that there's no sport. So for baseball collectors out there, uh, what are we going to be buying cards of if there's no season, especially when it comes to Series 2 or it comes to Update Series? So a lot of questions. And so I, I have a feeling that repack products are going to um, have a surge, but there's going to be a lot of losers in these. And these are, and there's very, they're very different than the actual product packed out by Tops. So I'm going to take a, the perspective of from above the clouds, in a sense. I'm going to give a very uh, high-level overview. I'm not going to get granular in this, but I want everyone to realize the difference of these two products. Now, if you are Tops and you're making a product, what is the goal? Right, the goal is to make money, but they, they go about it a different way, right? You have your wages for the developers or, or your designers. You've got to factor all of that in. You've got to factor in the cost of the autographs, like what it costs to have Mike Trout in the product, what it has, what it costs to have a very, very basic rookie. You know, you want to have a, a number, whatever that number is. I want to spend, you know, half a million dollars in autographs. And how can I make my budget work with that number? 500, you know, if it's, if Trout is a hundred thousand, how am I going to fit in the other people into this set? You know, what contracts are out there? Uh, if it's this, if this is a product with, with relics, right? What are those jerseys going to cost? You know, how much equipment do I need to buy uh, to fulfill this product? Maybe the next product. You know, when it comes to getting autographs itself, right, if they're on-card autographs, you've got to factor in the shipping of the cards to the, the players, uh, what kind of loss could come from that. You know, also, if you are sending your, your associates to the individual players' houses, there's, there's costs there. So all of that is baked in uh, to the overall, the, the, the cost of the product to make. And then they still have to make their, their, their target margin. Also, you've got to factor in production costs, right? What does it cost tops to, to pay the production company to print these cards, to pack out these cards? You know, there are a lot of costs built in into a product. But from an in consumer perspective, every single card in that pack could be a winner. The secondary market sets the price for these cards. Yes, right now we know Mike Trout is a a top name in any product to pull an autograph or Jordan Alvarez for a rookie. But who is the Trevor story of 2021, of 2022, right? Those those cards now are being made for pennies on the dollar. And so you could have a card right now that could be worth maybe 10 cents and it could be worth 20 bucks in a year from now. But that is, Tops doesn't care about secondary market. They have their price point. They know what the product costs and they sell it for that price to the distributors or then they sell it to us with a markup on tops.com. But Tops is not, or, or Panini or Upper Deck or whoever the company is, they're not focused in on secondary market value. Even on the back of the packs, it says these cards uh, are not guaranteed to hold value in the future. So when we think of a Tops product or, or just a general product we open as a group break, as an individual person, uh, you know, there is no set value in these cards, but there is a drastic difference in repack products. And let's talk about repack products right now. The single biggest difference in a repack product versus a standard product you'll buy at a hobby shop is the repack product is solely based on the secondary market value, which we set as collectors or buyers. So let's run, to, let's run through some numbers real quick. And let's take, for example, if I'm going to build out a 25 pack repack product, let's say I want to take $2,000 and build out that 25 card set. In those 25 cards, I'm going to advertise two AAA names, just massive cards you could pull. And they're going to cost me 500 bucks a piece to buy. That leaves me only $1,000 left of my $2,000 budget to fill in the other 23 cards. What would the average price be of those 23 cards? If I wanna stay within my budget, it can only be $43. Now, 
you're not going to go find 23 cards at $43. You might have a couple at $100. You might have a couple at $10 at 15 There is a wide gap of, of values of cards in these repack products. And that's why you've got to be careful with these repack products. Yes, the top cards are great. Yes, somebody is going to win. But there are going to be so many more losers out there in these repack products than there are winners. They, the math just doesn't work out. Nobody's going to have a repack product with all cards that are worth thousands of dollars. It just doesn't happen. And that's because these repack products are based on secondary market values. And that is where you have to be careful. So if you're, if you're thinking about getting into a repack product, look at what they're offering. Look at the cards. Look at the winners. But remember, there are going to be a lot more losers in this, way more than in a regular tops product or upper deck product where those cards are just put out based on, on contracts, on, on an ROI target, uh, not based on secondary market value. But the moment you get into a product that is, that is based on secondary market value, you're going to get burned more than you're going to win. So please be careful out there the next couple of months as repack products uh, start to make a surge in the hobby. Buyer beware on these packs. So with that, guys, thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. Have a great weekend, and I will talk to you all tomorrow.